Good evening and welcome to this week's Camel News, as the ships of the desert converged on the track in celebration of the UAE's 45th National Day. As ever, we'll be bringing you up to speed with all of the action from the Camel Racing Club headquarters in Al Moon. Let's start off with this week's headlines. His Excellency Sheikh Hamdan bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, Dubai Crown Prince, Chairman of Dubai Sports Council, attends Al Mamoum qualifying races. There was exciting and strong competition among the junior camels, Legea, Hagag and Yathia categories. In the Legea and Yathia qualifying races, Marjura and Kahal ran out winners for their highnesses, the Sheikhs. We check in with the international visitors at Al Mamoun. Plus, we have our snapshot of the week. In line with the huge UAE 45th National Day celebrations, and in the presence of His Excellency Sheikh Hamdan bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, Crown Prince of Dubai and Chairman of the Executive Council, Dubai Camel Racing Club at Al Mamoun Racetrack staged 18 races for Their Highnesses the Sheikhs over a distance of five kilometers. Once again, it was a superb few days for Al Asifa stables. In the first race of the day, the informed team succeeded in sending out the first three home after Marjara won in style, beating the rest in a time of 7.33.04. In race two, Al Asifa continued their dominance under the supervision of trainer Gaith Al Hilali, who sent Inzar to overcome her competitors in the fastest time so far. Inzar means warning, and she certainly issued one of these to her rivals, settling in the middle of the pack and making smooth progress on the home turn, before bursting to the front and landing the spoils in style. Stopping the clock at 7.30.90. The third race brought with it a third win in a row for Alasifa Stables, continuing their fine performance. Gaith took the lead in the final two kilometres to grant trainer, Gaith, another big success in a time of 7.35.7. The fourth race saw a super four-timer for Alasifa when Lamar cruised the victory in a time of 7.35 flat. On day two, Al Mamoun continued to celebrate the 45th National Day. This time there were 16 qualifying races for Yetha, owned by the Sheikhs, over a distance of five kilometers. The first race was for local Abkar and Lama, for His Excellency Sheikh Rashid bin Hamdan bin Rashid Al Maktoum, raced into an early lead, but at the final stages and from nowhere jumped Kahal for Al Asifa Stables to steal the victory clocking 9.15.6. The thoroughbred Akbar division was a competitive affair, with Ramruma for Al Asifa, Al Darby for His Excellency Sheikh Rashid bin Hamdan bin Rashid Al Maktoum and Mansoura for Al Shahaniya stables looking the three to concentrate on. However, it was Al Asifa stables Ramruna who hit the front like an arrow and won in style. The time was 9.23.2. Al Asifa continued their supremacy in the third race for local Jadan when their Murdy dominated the field and recorded a time of 9.17.1. Murdy means satisfactory, but this performance was far better than that. In the thoroughbred Jadan race, Al Shahania Stable sent out a strong team, headed by Muafrak, which means successful in Arabic. He led all the way from the gate to the line, winning in 9.36. In heat 13, designated for local Abkar, Al Asifa Stable showed off a potential star of the future 
when their Athara, which means excitement, scored in a record time of 9-10-9. The festivities continued on to the fifth qualifying race for her gag owned by local handlers. There were 20 races of 3 kilometers each, with the first 12 open and the other 8 for breeding camels. The morning's open race was for Abkar and it produced an exciting matchup between Awayed, Ramuz and Samha. However, it was Alam, which means flag in Arabic, for owner Saif Kemis Saeed Abadi who turned the table on her rivals, recording the best time of 4.26.3. The second open race was for Jaydan. Muhalaf and Al Mutahed fought for the lead, but in the final few hundred metres, it was Mubarak Mohanad Balhabab Al Amri's camel who took the lead and crossed the finish line in 4.32.6. Race 13 was for local production Abkar, and it was the sons of Al Wagan who took the local breeding title, or Abkar. Obeyed Mohammed Nikarat Al Amri sent out Araf to seal the victory, succeeding in a time of 40 33. In the second round, specially designated for local breeding Jadan, it was Shobash for owner Mohamed Musfir Belgoeba who produced a strong finish, beating his rivals in 9.32.8. The fifth qualifying races were for locally owned Hagag and took place over a distance of 5 kilometres, 18 races. The last eight heats were for breeding camels. The first race of the open rounds was for local purebred Akbar, and it produced something of a surprise. Babula Muktara and Wassam battled for the early lead, but it was Azira, which means cautious, who bided her time. Owned by Hadith Hamad Afsan Alawadi, she quickened late in the race and overtook them in the final stages clocking 7.31.3. The second race was for thoroughbred Abkar. Watan means homeland in Arabic, and Rashid Mohammed Murair bin Dry Al Mansouri's camel turned in a fantastic display, crushing the finish line in 7.32, the best time of the day. Race number 11 was for the local breeding Abkar, and it looked a three-way tussle. Malami, Bayan and Khalija all started well, but the situation changed when Thamina, owned by Sultan Mohammed Markan al-Mansouri, took the lead and won the race in style, finishing in 7.41. حقكم خير ناموس ثمينة اليوم في شوط الأول إنتاج عن ناموس واحد هو بناموس ناموسين نعم ناموس الإنتاج لذة غير وطعمه غير أو ثمينة إنتاج أبو وأم في العزبة نعم تنحدر سلالتها من سلالة مياس أو أمها بنت شراب والله صحيح نحن ثمينة الحين في مرحلة تجهيز إن شاء الله أو إن شاء الله لا منشد الركض إن شاء الله نحن نجهز إن شاء الله الأشواط حساسة الأشواط الرموز أو وفالها إن شاء الله وفالكم وفال المشاهدين الناموس والخير والله يا أبو شهاب هذا ثاني اشتراك لها في هذه السنة ثاني اشتراك أشاركناها اشتراك وسبقت في رماح وهذا ثاني اشتراك الشوط الأول الشوط الأول غير لو ما الشوط الأول ما يتني الكاميرا لو ما الشوط الأول ما أرمست عندك وفي هذا الميكروفون الشوط الأول لذ تغيير و وحتى يعني يوم انت تسبق عندك بكره في الشوط الاول تعرف انها على مستوى ما حد يقدم بكره له في الشوط الاول الا هي على مستوى الشوط الاول. انا انومس لابويا سلطان محمد المرخان المنصوري وانومس الراعي العابره اخوي مبارك مرخان المنصوري 
ونومس لجميع هالخزنه وهالرماح كافه وهذا ناموسهم واقول لهم ان شاء الله ان نشرفكم ونبيض ضيوفكم ان شاء الله في المحافل الخارجيه وان شاء الله مياس ثمين ان شاء الله من اليوم وغادي ان شاء الله ما تقع الا في شوط حساس وان شاء الله في شوط رمز ان شاء الله Race number 12 was for the thoroughbred Ab car, and it was Mamduha who took the lead in the last two kilometers, accompanied by Nawasi. Giam soon took the lead from both of them, but she couldn't continue her fast rhythm and faded, allowing Hajar, owned by Nasib Khalifa Saeed Alkili, to nick the win in a time of 7.35.24. On Tuesday morning, Al Mamoun held the fifth qualifiers for the junior camels, Hagag, Lagaya, and Yathia. The day's racing was devoted to Yathia for local owners. There were 16 rounds over six kilometers, with the final six races for breeding Yathia. The first race was a purebred Abkar. It was led from the off by Al Shana, Masaya, and Muda, but later Al Abra and Madawi took the lead from them. Then, from out of the back jumped Masika, owned by Mohammed Hamad Khalifa Al Atiyah, who caused an upset and won in style in 9.19.05. The competition continued to be red hot, and the second race was a hot one for Abkar, Barmajar, and Al Ghazira, who dictated the early pace until Zahia took the lead from them. In the final two kilometers, Gaira solved the puzzle, beating Al Ghazira and Katara in a time of 9.23.07. The fourth race saw the best time, when Wata, owned by Humaid Salah Al Mehi Al Nasori, clocked 9.16.14, impressing as he did so. The eleventh race of the morning was for local breeding Abkar. It saw Shahid and Saraba, which means Mirage, race to an early advantage until Ashaba took over. However, it was Al Zahia, which means the Bright, owned by Saif Mohammed Ray Al Shiga, who finished the best, winning in a time of 9.24.00. Bright indeed. The second race was devoted to thoroughbred Abkar. It was run perfectly to suit Mula, who broke well, taking the lead along with Magutha. Magutha briefly strode on, but Mula wasn't to be beaten and showed great tenacity to win in 9.28.09. Time to review the best times recorded by the junior camels for their highnesses the shakes. Inzar was the fastest in 0, 07, 30, 90 in the Legea category, while in the Yetha races, Ithara was the quickest in 9, 10, 9. Now for the fastest times among the locally owned camels. In the Hagag group, Alam recorded the best time of 4.26.3. While in the Legea category, Watan recorded the best time, 7.32. In the Yathaya category, Wada was fastest, winning in 9.16.14. Time for this week's look at our Al Mamun champion.
Camels, acknowledged as the ship of the desert, have long been considered a symbol of the UAE's pride and prosperity. Camel racing is an important segment of the country's unique culture and tradition. The National Day Camel Marathon, organised by the Hamdan bin Mohammed Heritage Centre in cooperation with Dubai Camel Racing Club, took place on Saturday the 3rd of December in Dubai International Endurance City, Say Al Salam. It was organised to safeguard the important cultural heritage of the UAE and is part of the ongoing 45th UAE National Day celebrations. The media centre of Dubai Camel Racing Club, always at the heart of events, was keen to broadcast all of the occurrences that happened during the National Day Camel Marathon. This unique race showcased the kindred spirit between man and animal. It was open to UAE citizens of 18 years of age and above and took place over a 24 kilometre distance. 52 riders gathered at Say Salam to compete in the race, which is now in its second year. The win went to Salim Obeid Al Hamab, riding his camel Lahik, who took the lead from the start and held off the challenge of Shafar Gilliam, riding Muwali in the final metres, collecting the two valuable prizes. Shafar Gulam and Mulay held on for second, ahead of Ali Masbar bin Mufli al Qatabi. So, our congratulations go to Salim Abaid Al Hamad, winner of the Golden Sword and the car. We caught up with him after his big success. <laughs> ونحب الركوب وما قصر الله يطول بعمر الشيخ محمد بن راشد وحط لنا الجائزه والله يطول بعمار مشيوخنا وما قصر حاول طنا وهالهجن هالتراثب ونا زايد وعاد لازم نخليه كل سنه ونركبه والله يطول بعمار الشيوخ ويخلونا ونركب. We also spoke to Shafa Gila Musa Al Balushi, the second winner. عندنا شيء كثير الحمد لله ونشكر اصحاب اسم الشيوخ ما قصروا الله يطول بعمارهم وركوبنا كان جميل الحمد لله وفوز وهذا المصيبة الحين الحمد لله فزنا هنا مركز ثاني اول ثاني ثالث اعتبارا الفوز نشكر اصحاب الشيوخ اصحاب اسم الشيوخ مستانسين و الحين المصيبة الفوز الحمد لله هنا ثاني كان كلام Time now to hear from Ali Masbar bin Mufla Al Katabi, who was the third winner. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> اليوم يعني كنت اطمح للسيف لكن ما الله كتب هذا حظ ونصيب اهدي طول عمرك للدولة واهدي الناموس طول عمرك لهالي اول شيء وثاني شيء في الاخص يعني اهدي الناموس هذا لسالم بسعيد الزرعي عشان وجوده بعيره طول عمرك ومشاركه به اشكر دولة الامارات بالعيد الوطني واشكر نادي دبي لسباق الهجن على نظامهم وتنظيمهم صراحة رائع. The staff at the Hamdan bin Mohammed Heritage Center, Sultan Rashid bin Markad, Mohammed bin Dalmuk, and Rashid Al Kasoni had the pleasure of presenting the prizes to the winners. The champion received a golden sword and a car, while the second received 70,000 dirhams and the third 30,000 dirhams. There were also prizes for the next seven home. A pretty good day's work, all in all. Afterwards, everyone extended their thanks to His Excellency Sheikh Hamdan bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum and to the staff of Hamdan bin Mohammed Heritage Centre for their efforts in staging the popular event. While everyone in the UAE celebrated the 45th National Day, 
Several visitors spent the long weekend with a trip to, where else, Al Moon Racetrack. Uh, amazing, uh, better than we thought. We actually thought there was only going to be one race today and then we find out there's 18 races. So amazing how many camels and then to find out the cost of each camel, it's, you know, it's amazing, really good. Even just being here on National Day as well, it makes it a little bit more special. It's something that in England you don't hear of. Um, the, the robots on the back of the, um, the camels as well, it's really good, especially with all the cars and the shake as well here today, amazing. Well, for me, it is definitely kind of experience I would, I would want to recommend, but in all fairness, I kind of got an impression that it was something that you guys wanted to keep in between yourselves. It's not, that's why it's not necessarily strongly advertised uh, among tourists. So my impression was that uh, it's something that you want to keep locally to, to your people rather than spread the word out there. So if you really want it, recommending to other people, that's definitely something we're going to be doing. That's for sure, yeah. Because it is an incredible experience, that's definitely, and something so traditional as well. It's just being part of it, it is amazing. Oh, it's really interesting. I, I've seen horse racing before in Europe and the UK, but uh, never camel racing before, so it's quite exciting. Maybe because there are jockeys on the horses, then uh, there is more of a human element, I suppose. Um, but the, the, it's still excitement to see who is going to win. So I guess that's, that's the big excitement. Which, which camel comes first, which horse comes first? Let's have a look at this week's snapshot. We hope you enjoyed this week's episode of Camel Racing News, a slightly longer one than usual. We'll be back with you again next week. <laughs>